In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about exponential functions. And exponential functions are functions that are in the form f of x is equal to a times b to the power of x plus q. And the main difference that we find when we're dealing with exponential functions is that the variable is in the exponent. So here we can see our x is in the exponent, and this is quite different from any of the functions that we've dealt with thus far. So let's take a look at the following function. f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x. If we have this function, let's try and see what we would get if we were to graph this. So the first thing that we can do is get our Cartesian plane. So here we have our Cartesian plane, and I'm going to plot this graph by just determining some x and y points in this graph. So let's try and find some different values for x and see what we would get for y. So let's start out with negative 4. If x is equal to negative 4, then y is going to be 2 to the power of negative 4, which is 1 16th. If x is equal to negative 3, then we are going to have y as 2 to the power of negative 3, which is 1 8th. If x is negative 2, then y is going to be 2 to the power of negative 2, which is 1 quarter. If x is equal to negative 1, then we are going to have our y as 1 half. If x is equal to 0, y is going to be 1. If x is equal to 1, y is going to be 2. And when x is equal to 2, y is 4. So let's start out by just plotting this. So when x is equal to negative 4, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to be here. And y is going to be 1 16th, which is going to be very, very close to 0. It's going to be somewhere around here. When x is equal to negative 3, that's over here, y is equal to 1 eighth. So again, that's going to be less than 1, slightly higher than this point here. So let's say that's somewhere over here. Then when x is negative 2, y is 1 quarter. That's going to be just a little bit higher. And when x is equal to negative 1, we have y is equal to 1 half. So that's going to be just slightly higher there. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. So this is going to be our y-intercept. When x is equal to 1, y is going to be equal to 2. So that's going to be a point over here. And when x is equal to 2, y is going to be equal to 4. So that is going to be a point over here. And just to show you how this graph is going to change on this side of the plane, let's just quickly calculate what we would get for y when x is equal to 3. When x is equal to 3, we're going to have a y value of 8. So when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 8. So if we were to join these dots together, we would get a graph that looks like this. So this is what our graph would look like. And I apologize if this is a bit wonky, but this is meant to be a smooth line that goes in this shape. So what are a few things that we can notice about this? Well, if we look at this side of the x-axis, when we're going into more and more negative x values, it's looking like as we get into the negative x values, this graph is going to be decreasing and decreasing and decreasing, and it's going to actually be approaching zero. But it's never actually going to touch zero. If we have this number every time, we're never actually going to reach zero or cross zero, but this line is going to go closer and closer and closer to y is equal to zero. And if we recall from our last few videos, we learned that we have a special name for that, and that is called an asymptote. So in this curve, we are going to have an asymptote at y is equal to zero. Another thing that we can notice is that when we are going into our positive x values, this graph is going to exponentially increase. So as we are increasing our x by one, our y is increasing much, much faster. So our curve is going to get very, very steep as we increase our x values here. 
And that is quite characteristic of an exponential curve. We are going to have exponential increases in our y values for small increases in our x values. And that we can see by the steep look of this graph here. So I've copied this graph of y is equal to 2 to the power of x here. And now let's take a quick look at what graph we would get if we were to plot y is equal to 2 to the power of x plus 1. So the only difference now between this graph that we're going to be plotting and y is equal to 2 to the power of x is that we've added our value of q. You can recall that our standard form for an exponential function is going to be f of x is equal to a times b to the power of x plus q. So right now we are looking at what the effect of q is going to be on our graph. So if we make an xy table, uh, let's try a few different values for x and see what we're going to get for our y values. So if x is equal to negative 4, y is going to be equal to 1 and 1 16th. And that is going to be equal to 1.0625 as a decimal. And from now on, I'm just going to write all of these y values in their decimal forms. So if x is equal to negative 3, then y is going to be equal to 1.125. If x is equal to negative 2, y is going to be equal to 1.25. When x is equal to negative 1, y is going to be equal to 1.5. When x is equal to 0, y is going to be equal to 2. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3. When x is equal to 2, y is going to be equal to 5. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to 9. And when x is equal to 4, y is equal to 17. So let's plot these values onto this plane and see what we get. So when x is equal to negative 4, that's going to be here. y is going to be 1.0625. So it's going to be just above 1. When x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to 1.1. So that's going to be just slightly higher than the point that we had at x is equal to negative 4. Then when x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 1.25. So that's going to be just slightly higher. When x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to 1.5. So that's going to be right here between 1 and 2. When x is equal to 0, y is going to be equal to 2. So that is going to be our y-intercept, where y is equal to 2. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3. So that's going to be a point here. When x is equal to 2, y is going to be equal to 5. So that's going to be a point over here. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to 9. So that is going to be a point over here. And when x is equal to 4, that is actually going to go off our axis. So let's draw the curve with just these points that we've got so far. So that in purple is y is equal to 2 to the power of x plus 1. So what we can notice about this graph is that our purple graph is going to look very, very similar to our red graph, except we seem to have shifted our red graph upwards. So Q, as you might be guessing, is going to represent our vertical shift. Q is equal to our vertical shift. And this is similar to what we saw with hyperbolic equations. We also found in that case that Q was equal to our vertical shift. So if q is greater than 0, we're going to be shifting our graph upwards. And if q is less than 0, we're going to be shifting our graph downwards. Another thing that we can notice about this purple graph is that as we go into our negative x values, we can see that we are getting closer and closer and closer to 1, but we're never actually going to reach 1 or cross 1. So our new asymptote is going to be the line y is equal to 1. That is our asymptote. Whereas with our red curve, y is equal to 0 was our asymptote. 
So how can we express our asymptote by looking at the difference in these two functions? Well, when we don't have a value for q here, y is equal to 0 is our asymptote. Whereas when we have our value for q as 1, our asymptote is going to become y is equal to 1. And it turns out that just like in hyperbolic equations, y is equal to q is going to be your asymptote. That is going to be your horizontal asymptote. So you can determine your horizontal asymptote just by looking at your value for q here. If you don't have a value for q, such as in this red graph, your asymptote is going to be at y is equal to 0. And when we have a value for q, in this case our value for q is 1, y is equal to 1 it becomes our new horizontal asymptote. And we can see that q is also our vertical shift. We've just shifted our graph upwards. So now we know what the effect of q is going to be. We know that q is our vertical shift and that y is equal to q becomes our asymptote. So what about the effect of A? That is what we're going to look at in the next video. So in the next video, we will look at different values for A and see how that affects the appearance of the graph.